yes, guys, uh, welcome to our today's class. Uh, we are going to move uh, forward, right? Uh, you received uh, some switches and uh, one of the router, and uh, I'm sure that uh, you are using them, right? Uh, make sure that uh, every day you get used to those devices. So you can go and you practice for two to five minutes, right? And uh, today we are going to move uh, forward. I'm going to explain a few concepts related to switches and routers, right? But before moving forward, you have to understand this. You have to understand that there is a difference between a switch and a router, right? From the physical uh, point of view, you have to understand this just by looking. How can you notice that this is a router and this is a switch? Because sometimes those two devices can look the same. How can you know that you are dealing with a switch? How would you know that you are dealing with a router, right? When you are dealing with switches, when you look at, so at the back here, there is no power button, right? There is no power button. But if it's a router, you are going to see the power button where you are going to switch on and switch off the device, right? So just by looking at the device, you will know that this is a switch and this is a router, right? So a switch doesn't have a power button. There is no way you can do on and off. But when you are dealing with a router, you will see there is a power button, right? Because you can get lost with some of the models and the names and so on. But the power button can remind you that this is a router and this is a switch, right? Now, we are going also uh, to see uh, what we call the LID, right? When you got your device like this one, the switch, right? It's a switch for those port. So, and next here, you're going to see some LID, right? Some lights, right? We're going to learn about those lights, right? So I'm gonna share my screen and we're going to discuss more uh, about them. Uh, I want to share. It's okay. So we are going to talk about the LID light status, right? So LID light status. What you have to understand, guys, is this: when you are dealing with a router or a switch, most of the time, the LID will be split it in like three side or three parts or your switch, the way this switch is, you are going to have three parts, right? From the light status perspective, right? So three part. The first part is the green one. The green one will talk about what? We'll talk about the switch itself. So those lights will talk about the switch itself will tell you something about the switch, the status of your switch. And the second part here, the yellow one, will talk about the interfaces, the ports. So, and the last one is the mode, right? So when you look at the switch like this one, right? I don't know if you can see like properly. Yeah. When you can look at like this switch, like this one, right? From this side here, right? your LID status will be split it like in three parts, logically. You are going to see those LID, but you, you as a specialist, you have to understand that there are some LIDs that will tell me about the switch as a whole, right? So, and there are going to be some LIDs that will tell me something about my interfaces, my ports those interfaces, those port here, right? And the last one is the mode. And we are going to discuss about it. So shortly, guys, your LID status will tell you something about your switch. 
as a whole. Number two, it's going to tell you about uh, the status of your interfaces, of your codes, and we're going to have what we call the mode, right? So when you look at your switch in front, you are going uh, to see it's written SYST, like system, SYST, right? And you are going to see the LID next to this name. There is SYST and there is RPS. Those two will tell you about the switch, will inform you about the status of your switch. Your switch is it off? Your switch is it working? Your switch is it a transmitting or receiving data? Or there is something wrong, right? So those two, SYST and RPS, will tell you about what the switch itself, right? So the SYST, it's what the system LID. So this one will show you the status of your power and the functionality. So shortly, SYST will tell you about the status of your power and functionality, right? The second one is RPS, redundant power supply, right? Remember that your switch will have a power supply, right? That will bring the electricity on the device, right? So those LID, those lights will tell you about what? The status of your power supply. Your power supply, is it on, is it off, right? This is what does it mean. So the first one, the system LID, the redundant power supply, will tell you something about your switch. The SYST or the system LID will inform you about uh, the power and the functionality, right? And the, uh, the RPS, the redundant power supply, will tell you about your power supply, will inform you about the status of your power supply, right? So, and you guys, you have to know because we're gonna have different colors sometimes it's green sometimes it's amber right sometimes it's gonna be green but green that is blinking or amber that will be blinking or maybe it's gonna be off what can you decide when next to cyst the light is off or maybe the light is green what does it mean or maybe the light is amber what does it mean or maybe the light is green and blinking. What does this mean? This is what we're going to see. Or maybe when you look at, you're going to see it's written RPS, but the light is green. Or maybe the light is blinking. Or maybe it's amber. What does it mean? So your switch, somewhere it's going to be written cyst, and you're going to have the light next to cyst. And you're going to have RPS, and you're going to have the light next to it. But you have to understand that those two, it's all about the switch as a whole. The SYST will inform me about the power and the functionality, and the RPS will tell me something about the power supply. And when you are done, you're going to move now to the interfaces. There are going to be some lights that will inform you about the status of your interfaces, right? There is what we call the start. This start, this is the port status LID, right? So this start will show the light on each port, right? So you're going to have your port, your interfaces, like the first port, first Ethernet 0 slash 1, 0 slash 2, 0 slash 3. You are going to have some lights like on top that will indicate the status of that particular port, right? So the port is it off, the port is it sending and receiving data or there is a problem and so on right so when you see like a port that interface that interface will have a light that light will tell you something about that particular port right sometimes uh, when you have like two ports one above like uh, one on top and one like on the bottom you're gonna see two uh, two triangles one it shows up and one is showing down means the one up uh, is the one that is linked to the first port and the, the triangle that is looking like down is the one that is linked to 
the second part, right? So remember guys, the start will tell you about the status of what? Of your port. For every port, there is a light. In that light, you are going to check it from where? From the, st from the start. So the start will tell you about a particular port, right? And uh, there is what we call du duplex, right? So duplex will tell you something about the duplex, port duplex, right? So when you look at your duplex, you're going to be, uh, you are going like to see a light next to duplex, right? That light will tell you something about the settings of your duplex. Remember that we do a full duplex, a half duplex or automatic. When you have in, like your port, your port can operate like in full duplex, Full duplex means that port can send and receive data at the same time or frame. Half duplex means you can only send or receive, right? Not those two actions so at the same time. So the duplex will show you some settings about the duplex of your interfaces. And the speed will show you what? Will tell you some things about the speed settings. That port, so is it operating using 10 megabit, 100 megabit, or 1000 and so on, right? So, and there is what we call POE, a power over uh, Ethernet. This one, this light will show you the power over Ethernet status. What does it mean? You know when you have a switch, sometimes your interfaces can provide what? Power and data. Means you can plug a camera to a, a port on the switch. That camera will also receive power. There's no need for you again to take the camera and plug it to another a power supply. Right? So this is, what does it mean? So power over uh, Ethernet means that those ports from the switch can provide power and data. There are some devices that you don't need again to plug them to your extension and so on. You can only use the same port, the same interface to get also power and to transmit and receive data, right? So shortly, those are some of the things you are going to see when you are dealing, when you wanna learn about your port status, right? So when you wanna know about your port status, you are going to look at the light next to start or the light next to duplex when you want to learn about the duplex settings or you are going to have to look at the light next to speed when you want to learn about the speed of your settings or the light next to the power over internet, right? So, and that light status so it's going to have maybe different colors. And for you, we are going to see when your light is green, what does it mean? When your light is blinking, what does it mean? When your light is off, what does it mean, right? And the last one is the mode, the mode button. So somewhere you're going to see there's a mode button. The mode button will allow you to alternate between different modes. So when you are pressing the mode button, you can move consist. When you press again, so it's gonna bring you to RPS. When you press again, it's gonna bring you to start. When you press again, it's gonna bring you to duplex. When you press again, it's gonna bring you to speed. When you press again, it's gonna bring you to power over Ethernet. Suppose like I wanna learn something about my port status. I can only press, press, move, like up to start. When I'm gonna be there, now I'm gonna observe the light like on top of my interfaces. When I'm gonna, when I wanna learn something about the speed, so I can only use the mode button to move like up to the speed and I can learn something about the speed on my interfaces, right? So this is an overview guys. This is how you have to understand when you look at the light like on your devices, right?
or in front of your devices, right? So you're going to have a switch or a router. Always look at the mansion, right? You must know that among those lights, there are some lights that gonna tell me something about the switch as a whole. There are going to be something that gonna let me know about the status of all those interfaces, and they are going to be what we call a mode that will allow me to move between those status. All right. Now, remember again, you can also use the mode button for resetting the device. Right. For resetting, you can also use the mode button, but don't do it. Right. So this is what does it mean. Right. So shortly, you have a problem. Go like in front of your switch. Look at the lights. You must know where am I? Sys or RPS or stats. Suppose like you want to learn something about your port or the status of your port. Use the mode button. Go up to stats and look at the behavior of your light. Is it green? So is it amber? Right? So is it blinking or is it off? Right? And remember that if there is one port like on top, so another one down, you're going to have two LIDs, one with the triangle showing up and one with a triangle showing down. Means like it's this one. Right? Now, uh, so this is just an exercise that guys you are going to to answer for me, right? So which one can indicate what the switch uh, is doing? Eh? Which one can indicate what the port is doing? And just answer those questions, right? Related to what I've explain now uh let's see the lid status right states right when they start showing off means what means there is no link right there is no connectivity to that particular port right when the start is green means the link is up right so the port is plugged maybe from the computer to the switch. It means it's up, right? When it's blinking green, so when you move to start, you see that the LID is on top of your port. It's blinking green, means there is an activity, means maybe the switch and the computer is a communication, or maybe the switch to switch, there's a cable that you connect with the communication, right? When you see the ember, it's blocked. A blinking ember, blocked. Alternating means fault, means there's a problem. Sometimes it can, sometimes like ember means there is a problem, all right? And when you move to duplex, when you see it off, means that that port is configured on half duplex. When you see green, it means it's full duplex, right? So when you see a blinking Green is non applied and so on, right? Speed, when you see it off, right, it means that port is operating on what? The 10 megabit per second. When you see green, it means 100. When you see blinking green, it's 1000 megabit per second, right? This is how you have to interpret those LID lights, right? Now, Let's see when uh, from here, yeah, it's when you are dealing with the status of your interfaces. So, and this one, it's when you are dealing with, with what? Like the switch as a whole, right? So when your, your random dense power supply is off, or maybe showing off means it's off, right? When it's showing green means your, your random dense power supply is ready the same as your power over Ethernet, right? So those two tables will guide you, right? Yeah, easy guys, right? As I said, morning, when you look at a switch, you have to look at those, those main three parts, like in front of your switch, they are 
So you're going to have some light that will uh, indicate the status of your switch, like as a whole, the status of your interfaces, right? You must know how to navigate and how to understand what does it mean, right? And we are going uh, to move to what we call tagged and tagged and native VLAN, right? This is what we call the tagged port and untagged port and a native VLAN. Remember that, guys, we did VLANs and so on. I want you just to add uh, something. When we are talking about untagged, untagged port or untagged communication, it's a communication that can happen only in a single VLAN, like in a single department. Suppose like we are in the same department, maybe VLAN 10. Computers or users in VLAN 10, when they want to talk, that communication is going yeah. to be said is untagged, right? Because we are in the same department. There is no need to precise a VLAN ID. If I, myself, and you, we are in the same VLAN, when we want to talk, when myself, I'm going to send you like a message, there is no need to precise the VLAN number. There is no need for me to precise the VLAN ID. So we are going to say that that communication is untagged. Untagged means there is no need to precise the VLAN ID when we are communicating, right? Most of the time, the untagged port is what we call the access port, the access port, right? But when the communication is tagged, tagged means you have to precise the VLAN ID, right? So tagged means the communication between multiple VLANs, right? You, you've got VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, those two VLANs, they want to talk, right? They are going to use the tagged communication. And remember, when we are talking about the tag, we are talking about two different switches or multiple switches because the tag is linked to trunk port, right? So when two villains, two different villains, like in different switches, they want to talk, right? For them to talk, they need to precise what? So I have like to know your villain ID, right? So that process of precising the VLAN ID, it's called tagging. So tagging means you're precising the VLAN number, right? So when you have two to multiple VLANs, like in different switches, we need to, to use the tagged, right? We, we have to tag like our communication, means we have to precise the VLAN's ID. Means when I, VLAN 10, I want to send a message to VLAN 20 using another switch, right? My communication need to be tagged. So I have to precise which VLAN ID I'm looking because we are in different switches, right? So untagged means single VLAN. The communication is happening in a single VLAN. Tagged means that the communication is happening between multiple VLANs in different switches using a trunk port. There is also what we call the native VLAN. What is a native VLAN? Remember guys, you can have computers belonging to different VLANs, but you can also have the computers that are not belonging to any VLAN. Right, but those computers they can also talk. How they're gonna talk? They're gonna talk by configuring what we call a native VLAN, right? So when you have computers or devices in different switches, right, and those computers or those devices are not linked, are not associated to any VLAN you can use the native VLAN. You have to configure the native VLAN on the trunk in order for those computers or those devices to talk, right? And remember that you have to configure the native 
villain in both switches. Suppose like, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Suppose like on switch 10, your native villain is villain 99. You must also go to the second switch also. The native villain must also be 99. So the configurations of your native villain, the native villain number must match on both switches, right? So this is guys, right? Let me try first to stop. Yeah, so guys, first we spoke about the LID status. I told you that when you have a switch, you are going to have some light that will tell you something about the switch itself, right? Something about your interface status, right? And you're going to have what we call a mode. That mode will allow you to move between settings. And beside that, that mode button, you can also use it when it comes to reset your switch. And remember that the difference between your switch and the router is a switch doesn't have a power button and the router does have a power button. And we spoke about those ones, right? So, and now we are talking about what we call untagged communications, tagged and native villains. Untagged means when, when devices like in the same villain, they wanna talk. There is no need to precise the villain ID, right? But when like devices like in different villains, like in different switches, they wanna talk, you need to precise the villain ID. So tagging will happen in two or different switches. Right? And there is what we call a native villain. What is a native villain? You have to configure the native villain when you have like devices in different switches that doesn't belong to any villain. But they have also to communicate. Right? So now you're going to configure what we call the native villain. And remember that the native villain must be the same on all the switches. Suppose like you create it on switch one, your native villain is 99. You must go to switch two also. You said my native villain also gonna be 99 because the configuration must match, right? Yes, guys. Now we are going to talk about the types of villains, right? There are different types of villains, right? you have to know which villain you are dealing with. There is what we call a default villain, management villain, data villain, native villain, and voice villain, right? Default villain is villain number one, right? When you go to, uh, let's say, oh, let me just log in. Yeah. So those are the types of villain that you can have with the default villain management villain data villain native villain and voice villain let me first log in and uh, i will show you on packets uh, tracer what i'm talking about yeah let's say i have a switch here right i can go to cli my switch is booting right okay uh show villain brief when i'm gonna say show villain brief see what you're gonna see guys here you're going to see that this is the villain one, right? By default. So all the ports they belong to villain one, right? By default, all your ports they belong to villain one. And you cannot delete villain one, right? You cannot delete your villain one. You cannot rename your villain one. 
when you go to your packet uh to your network card here you can see here it's 3.1.3 they're explaining about those villains right so the default villain yeah right you cannot delete your default villain you cannot rename it right and remember your native villain is villain one but you have to change your native villain to another number but the default native villain is villain one by default right and villain number one or the default villain we use it also for management by default it's also a villain for management when you want to access your switch so you can give your default villain sorry sorry you can give your default villain like an ip address like interface space villain space one and you give it an ip address you know yeah in order for you to access it remotely for management so you can be at home you can access it by using the default villain ip right you can see here show villain you can see like all your villain number two it's what we call the data villain right so data villain we call it also user generated traffic or a user villain right you can use it to separate your network into groups of users or devices we can use a data villain when we want to create like department when we want to create groups right like villain 10 villain 20 right so that's one is a villain that will allow you to connect to users right to separate users in different groups so and we do have a native villain as i said totally native villain will allow you guys to connect devices that are not belonging to any villain because they have also to talk this is what you have you have to remember that i got my switches my switches will have villains now let's say some computers are not are connected or associated to any villain how they're gonna talk you have to configure the native villain so and we have what we call a management villain you're going to use this management <laughs> villain for network management uh, traffic for configuring the devices right like maybe you want to access your device remotely by by using a protocol uh, what we call sshh no ssh ssh or telnet or https yeah. so you can access a switch by using secure shell secure shell is ssh it's a protocol that will allow you to access securely your switch from home from from wherever you are right you can also use this telnet but telnet is not protected so you can also access your device using a telnet a protocol that is not protected or you can use the https right you can also use the simple network management protocol so the management villain will allow you to do what to manage your network traffic right there is also what we call the voice villain so you can have a switch but that switch can also connect telephone lines so you have a switch and you have the telephone lines so instead of users using their airtime their phones they can use the internet they can use data to make calls right now when you have a switch you can create what we call a voice villain and that voice villain will allow like all your computers to make the calls using those those telephone lines so you can connect your telephone lines on the switch but you have to create their own villain so telephone line must have their own villain we call it the voice villain why because you need the bandwidth you need uh the communication to be fast right the speed of the call so, and the speed of sending data is different or the speed of your sending your emails your messages is different when you want to make call 
you need a fast, fast, fast connectivity. That way you need a separate villain for voice, right? So, and you need to prioritize, but you have to prioritize the communication. When there is somebody who's sending like an email and somebody who's making call, the call must come first. You have to do the priority. The call is always its priority number one, right? So this is the meaning of voice villain. Separate the voice communication and uh, data communication, right? You don't want the phone line to use the same villain, right? So those are the types of villains, right? Now, those are the exercises, guys, you have to practice. Number one, we're gonna ask you to choose the type of villain. Which villain is it when you are connecting two users? Which villain you're gonna use? Management villain, voice villain. Number two, connection of two villains like on the same switch. Which villain you're gonna use? Connection of multiple villains in different switches. Which villain you can use for that? It's connection of users belonging to different department on different switches. Which villain you can go for? Sharing of protocols. You want to share the protocols. Which villain? Connection of telephone lines. Which villain? Right? Exercise number two, choose if tagged or untagged. Right? Or untagged port, untagged All right, user A, like on villain 10, want to talk, want to communicate, want to communicate with user B, but user B is villain 30, it's on the same switch, they are on the same switch. That communication, is it tagged or untagged? Remember, I spoke about it. User A, want to communicate with user C, but user C is in villain 40, like on different switches. That communication, is it tagged or untagged? User A, B, and C, they want to communicate. Which type of communication? Is it tagged or untagged? You're going to answer. Number three, determine the issue with deep explanation and associate potential cause of the problem. When the system, the LID, is not blinking, what can be the problem, right? You have to explain. Number two, when the system LID is off, what can be the problem? You have to use the resources. You've got the internet. You've got my explanation. Try to go through my questions and try to give me an explanation. When you see the RPS is green, what does it mean? What can be the problem, right? And number four, you have to explain in detail, you have to explain in detail the use of a mode button, like in Cisco switches, right? Now, we are going to speak about the Cisco iOS. Remember that the Cisco will have, no, your switches, your users will have an operating system, like your computers, right? Will have like an operating system. But your, your devices, like your switches, your routers, will have what we call iOS, Internet Working Operating System. So switches and routers, like my switch here, will have what we call iOS, so Internet Working Operating System. So this is a command line uh, interface, right? So that operating system uses what? The command line for all the configurations that you have to do, like on your router, on your switches, you must use the command line, right? And your iOS will come in different modes, you know, those modes, user mode and so on, and specific command in every mode. So when you look at the switch, you must know that you switch, you have an operating system. That operating system, we call it iOS, Internet Working Operating System. And that operating system, that iOS, 
uses what? Command line. Those command line will allow you and I to configure routers and switches. And that iOS will have different mode. And for every mode, there are specific commands, right? So when you type like show version, you are going to see the version number, the version of your operating system. You are going to see the location where your operating system is saved, where your iOS is saved. You are going to see the memory, right? How many memory do you have? And for how long your switch will be on and the number of interfaces and so on, right? Let's go to my device here. So when I'm gonna say show version, right? Right? By typing like show versions, when I'm going up here, you can see my version is what? 15, this is my version, right? So I'm running 15.0 version, right? And when you go down a bit here, you are going to see that this is my iOS, my operating system, my internet working operating system, and my operating system, it saved where? Like on the switch, they what we call a flash. It's my operating system, my iOS, it's saved here on the flash, right? You can also save it like on the network. So when you switch on your switch, your switch can go and fetch the operating system from the network. But from now, my operating system, my iOS, it's saved on the flash. You can also see the memory, right? For you to get it in megabyte per second, you can divide the, uh, this number by 1024, right? So there are so many the information you can get from there. You can see that I got only one virtual interface. I got like 24 port or interfaces, and those are the fast, fast Ethernet, means 100 megabit per second, and I got two gigabit. Ethernet, the one that can transmit like up to 1000 megabit per second, right? You can also see the serial number, right? The serial number is there, right? There are so many the information you can get from there, right? Okay, let me go back to my, oh, oh, my document, right? So, this is what you have to understand about your iOS, right? And those are the exercises. You are going to go to packet, a tracer. You pick up this switch. You're going to tell me what is the version number, what is the location of the iOS, what is the memory, like the size of your memory, for how long your switch like, has been on when you go back here. Uh, you can see, yeah, my switch, since my switch was on, it took 39 minutes, right? So you are going also to do the same. How many signal interfaces, how many fast, fast internet? The same, you're gonna pick up this from the package tracer, you're gonna feel also there, right? Remember guys, you can also check the location of your iOS by typing DIR, the directory. So when you go here, so I can only type what? Die DIR, and the DIR will tell me where is the location of my operating system of my iOS. You can see it like on flash, right? This is how you can check. But remember also, guys, you can also configure your routers using the graphical user interface, but you need what we call the Cisco configuration protocol, right? For a router, so a router, you can configure it also by using the graphical user interface, but I don't advise you to do so because this one will have limited configurations. So there is what we call Cisco configuration, sorry, there is what we call Cisco configuration professional that will allow you to configure your routers using graphical user interfaces, right? Now, you already type this one, router 
the hash show startup config. This is the host name. This is the mode. It shows you the mode. And this is the comment. And this is the argument, right? So when you see like a comment, you must be able, guys, to tell me what is the host name, which mode you are, what is the comment, and what is the argument, right? So you got here the exercises. You are here. You're going to tell me which mode you are, the host name, which comment, and what is the argument, right? And from question number two, you are going to list for me all the routers mode, right? So for today, guys, so I'm going to stop by here, and next time I will move to iOS version number. Don't hesitate, guys, if you got specific questions, right? You can contact me via WhatsApp, via email. Thank you very much. Thank you.